Good evening. Welcome to Johnny's Juke Joint. And my special guest this evening has been someone I met when I was very young. Um, I mean, I'm, of course, I'm still very young, but I was much younger. And uh, he he's a great guy. He's an incredible musician and one of the best piano players I've ever played with. He has a unique approach, definitely, to studying and training and learning music and uh, an incredible depth of knowledge in harmony and, and, and harmonic progression and how things work. He's an incredible improviser, a great player of all sorts of styles of music, uh, and, and we've worked on so many different things together, and I've seen it firsthand with him, and an incredible jazz player, and the piano player for the Calgary Jazz Orchestra. Uh, please uh, silently at home welcome, or say hi, or like, or ask any questions you want uh, in the chat window to Mr. Igor Yukolov. Igor, are you there? Yes, I'm here. <laughs> Excellent. I can hear you, but I can't see you. Well, you can't? No. Oh, 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 here you are. Here I am. Here you are. I'll play some yes, music. You, said you stopped it. Oh, how do, I, how do I turn it back on? I don't know. How did That's... You uh, how did you turn it off? I don't know. My tech guy's a... a, a uh, terrible. <laughs> you would not know if it's me or somebody else. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh goodness. Um, let me see. Let, let me see if I can do something. If there's anybody here who knows, write a comment. Um, oh, here we go. That's I think I cannot see myself. I think I can. I asked you to start video. Does that work? There it is. Oh, there you are. There Fantastic. I am. Learning is fun. Gosh. Learning is fun. <laughs> Man, it's been a while. Um, <clears throat> it's been a while since California. Too. It has been a while since California. Uh, how are you? I'm good. If we were to if we were to play a song right now, to introduce you. Um, can you play us a song to introduce yourself? Uh, the introducing song? Yeah, the introducing like, Igor Yukolov song. Just like the intro. Just the intro, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Igor Yukolov. <laughs> That's perfect. Intro. Perfect. I love it. I, um... I seriously, I, I, I've joked about this before, but I'm going to get you a, an electric battery powered keyboard, maybe a keytar, and I'm just going to like, I'm just going to hire you for a day to follow me around. And, and when I walk into like a store, you can, you can announce me with a song. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. So let, let's say, let's say I'm walking into a, a store, a suit store. We're downtown. Uh, and what would you play for me as I walked in? I was zoot suit, but I can't remember how it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Okay, well, I, I have so many questions I want to ask you. And, of course, I, you and I have been friends for a long time since I was uh, very young. And you were very young. And you were born in a very young age. I was born at a very young age. You remember that? Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> the... Um, uh, uh, but I want to ask you a bunch of questions because I want I want people to know more about you, especially you know like our fans with the Calgary Jazz Orchestra, and anybody listening that wants to know more about piano playing and more about you as a piano player. Um, oh, the, the, the introduction song for that. Oh, no, no. How about you? How about you? That's perfect. Okay, so where were you born? I was born also at a very young age. Yes. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> We share that in common. Yeah, that's 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 actually interesting. But I was born not in Canada, obviously. Uh, Why is it obvious that you were born out of Canada? Because the, my accent. Oh, you have an accent. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And I was born in a country that does not exist. <sighs> but the people still do. People still exist, but not the country. Country. Uh, used to call used used to be called 
Soviet Union. Right. Uh, and then uh, that's where I came from. And then it ceased to exist. It just collapsed. So I'm the I'm a man from nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still from my mother though, but uh, yeah. The um and uh, can you um can you talk a little louder just for the microphone? Um, okay. <laughs> um, and and you were born in Rostov on Don, correct. Russia, correct? Yeah. Um, what? And and you have a young son. And what was different about growing up there? Just a couple things that were different about growing up in the Soviet Union in Rostov on Don versus your son growing up in Canada here in North America. Well, it's different stuff in the stores. Actually, there's stuff in the stores here, but there was no stuff. Okay. Like <laughs> stuff is different. I like that. Yeah. Um, interesting. Um, and and what is it? What is a tradition in 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 Russia that we don't have in North America that you miss? Maybe something we should have. A tradition that we ah. Well, speaking of traditions, the Russians like to get together and eat at the round table. And here we don't do. Here we, like, here we have a buffet style. We have a cardboard plate. We don't even sit in and you know, so, <laughs> <laughs> That's tradition. But what else? I think uh, in North America, people sit in front of the TV when they eat. Uh, is the, yeah, but the plate like this. Right. And the burger. And the, we, that's what we didn't have burgers back then. No burgers. You had burgers, but no stuff for the burger. So you had just had a bun. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, the I, I remember once after after we played together for a few years, um, there was a Russian restaurant that you took me to in Calgary that that you said was was great, very like very well done Russian cuisine. It was amazing. And I remember we sat at a round table. I'd never really thought much about that until now. Well, the table in restaurant, there is, you have no choice. You sit at the table. Yeah. But the celebrations at home, that's how Russians do. Right. You have a big table full of food. Right. It's all on the table. So you're inviting me over for dinner soon, then, is. Yeah, but it's not round table. I have now, like, even you're, you're I, IKEA. IKEA. I, IKEA. <laughs> IKEA. Yeah. Um. So, so growing up there, where where was? How old were you? And what what was the first jazz that you heard? I had, I remember that very clearly. Uh, well, first of all, I grew up listening to Soviet jazz on on, on the vinyls and on radio, radio and TV. It was a great 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 player. Like, they still are great. Still around. Some of those were German states. But speaking of, uh, about American jazz, my first one I heard was in Rostov and Don, and that was a Louis Armstrong orchestra. But no, Louis, Louis, he just died. So uh, Dick Hyman was a mm. was a, a leader, became a leader. He was amazing. And, and he brought this orchestra, it was a couple of singers, um, a couple of female singers. Mm-hmm. Uh, great jazz singers and a great orchestra. And my, my mom took me to, to watch it. I, I, my, my jaw dropped. So that would be 1971, 1972 ish? No, that would be. Um, Isn't that. Maybe like, 1970. So I, mean, I know 71, Duke Anton came through, but I was not able to go probably to, to live it. But my mom took me there probably 1974, something like that. Okay, cool. 74. Wow. And it blew me away. And I wow. said, that's what I want to do. Well, it worked. Uh, then you, uh, you, were you playing piano at that time already? Yeah, of course. I, I was playing piano since I was four. Okay. I was studying piano. Of course. Right. And then you, uh, and then you studied at a conservatory in, in uh, Russia, in Rostov-on-Don, I believe. Yeah. In, in, uh, in Russia, you cannot attend conservatory unless you attend college. Mm-hmm. college first. Mm-hmm. Those are great. And you cannot attend the college 
unless you go to a special speciality music school between five to nine years i went to the longest one okay and you're ready to go to to college then they will consider it to you cannot just go to college from zero you have to be on certain levels you know the music drama right so, so i went to music school along with the regular school mm -hmm. so i went with went to two schools and, and was it huh? was it mainly jazz you were focused on or were you doing jazz and no, no, no. I, the jazz just a uh, jazz education did not exist until 1975 okay i was just going to music school studying piano music music right studying piano class, classical whatever right yeah no, we, uh, I just got a hi from Comox. Hi, Sue. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, can you play Sue from Comox something out on Vancouver Island? Play what? Play something Vancouver Island-esque. I, I have nothing. Got nothing for you other than that. Just me, just me. That's with Sue, just me. That's right. Perfect. Um, so then you, uh, after that, um, when you finish there, you, you came to study at the Banff Center for the Arts in Alberta, um, in the, in the Rocky Mountains in a beautiful setting. Um, and then you were here and you decided to stay here. Well, not that easy, not that. No, <laughs> of course not. No, <laughs> I, I, first I, I did some study in Hungary after okay. the conservatory. Did yeah. some study in Hungary. Actually, at Tikhton was one of the teachers there, the, the Oscar Pearson drummer. Wow, Beautiful. Ed Tikhton. So, uh, and then I, uh, because I was teaching in college already back then, I, uh, we were- In Russia. Uh, yeah, I, already, yeah, I was teaching in college that I graduated from. Mm -hmm. After going to conservatory, I, I came back to college to teach. Were you a nice teacher and, or were you really, really hard on them? Well, I was, Night or nice? Nice. I was <laughs> nice. I was, yeah. Okay. Um, but our college, because it's a young, it was kind of young jazz school, new for Europe, we were included in the in the in the book of jazz educated schools in the world. So the band center, they were, they to promote their program, they were sending the invites all over the world because we were there. In that book, we received the invite to the Band Center uh, workshop, mm -hmm. and I I sent them a rec record with my trio, the tape trio, and they and I received a scholarship after that. That was 1988. Uh, I, I received a full scholarship, scholarship back then. It was, I believe it was five weeks, and it was like five or six grand a course. It was very expensive. Mm -hmm. And I received a full scholarship, so I, I, I was able to get my guys to get a scholarship as well. My so they brought us as a trio. So that was Mike Levin, and and another Igor bass player. He's right, and Mike Levin on Levin. drums, right? Yeah. <clears throat> and then studying there, I loved it. I talked to back then. Dave Holland was a director, a program director. Uh, so we talked. I said I would like to come back. Oh no, sorry, sorry. Yeah, it was. Was Dave Hall, yeah. So I would like to come back, and I said I also would like to go to Berkeley. Mm -hmm. So uh, when I came back to Russia later, then I, I received this, another scholarship for uh, for Canada, and I received scholarship for Berkeley. Oh, Dave Hall uh, assisted, and I received that all. But Berkeley, it was really difficult to go for me back then because uh, you know Iron Curtain. I had this money, I had a full scholarship for Berkeley. But I never made it back then. So eventually, I was able to get out in '91, uh, June, I believe, or something like that, close to summer. Come back, and I came back to back to Band Center again. Mm -hmm. And that's when I stayed after that. But I already came, knowing that I'm staying. I already kissed my family goodbye, and I said, "I'm not coming." Sorry. Wow. Was it? Was it? Uh was it difficult? Um, because it wasn't it wasn't an easy paper trail. We was came it just to... because we were teachers in a college, so we went to the Ministry of Culture in Moscow. They uh, 
they arrange are organized as a, as a uh, studying troop uh, like well uh, uh, to increase uh, what you said to increase your qualification in teaching right so, right right so they send us overseas to study second time so they paid for it for a trip I already had the scholarship but they paid for the, uh, the tickets and traveling they gave us two hundred dollars for two of us it, was, it only came Michael Levin and me God mm -hmm. bless him Michael's mm -hmm. not with us anymore. So we came in 91 back with $200 for both of us. And we landed in Montreal, and that's where they bought us a ticket. So we landed in Montreal, and we bought a bus ticket to Banff for the rest of the $200. We only had five bucks <laughs> left when we arrived to, wow. to, uh, to Banff. And that we spent on taxi from the bus station. You you that's bust that's from so you bust from Montreal to Calgary. Yeah, it was like two or three days. And then took took a taxi with the only money you had. We spent it on the bus tickets to Montreal from uh, to sorry to Banff to, from from Montreal. From, from Montreal, that, that's um, that's amazing, that's amazing. So that's quite an adventure. That is quite an adventure. And that was sakes. basically second time in Canada. We still came from from, the, uh, from behind the Iron Curtain. So and your English is, is really good, of course, now. I mean, you spoke it for years yeah. and years and years, but like, but your, was, was it difficult then? Was that a, the, the, the language? Barrier? I knew English. Yeah. I knew English more like reading wise. I studied English mm -hmm. for, year, for several years in Russia. But it, you know, studying there is different than come here and start to converse. So uh, I, I knew how to read, how to write, but converse, uh, you know, it took, took a while. It took a while, yeah, I imagine. Gosh. That's um, understand that. See, see, to me, and I think to a lot of us, that's a, that all of that is amazing. You know, going to another country with another language, uh, halfway around the world. It's, it's, it's always amazed me that you you did that. Uh, I mean, of course, I'm glad that you did. <laughs> but um, but then, so you've you've been based out of Calgary. But like most musicians, uh, most of us, you, you were never happy to just perform in one place. We it's a great place to be based, but you've also toured uh, around the world. I know you and I have toured uh, around the world and together, but you've also worked on cruise ships and done uh, contracts, working as a player, doing all sorts of styles of music, pop and jazz and everything under the sun, um, and also worked as a band leader. Um, and and, and what, did you, what did you think of the, the, you know, working on cruise ships and doing the shows and the stuff on the ships? I say, I would say, I would say, uh, that every young musician needs to go to that school. Mm. Like well, you get, you get, uh, you graduate from school. You know five standards out of real good, and you, you know, know a few some, tunes. Yeah, yeah, and you know some. You know, you get some knowledge how to to write, how to play some chops, but you're not a musician. Yet. It's like, yeah, you know, you're not a, a um, you're not a complete musician yet. You just mm -hmm. It's like you're a, you're a painter. You have a your tools, uh, the, uh, the, the brushes and paints. But now we have to learn how to paint the pictures. So uh, this is very important, and I see as a kind of right now these days because not so much like music around. I see it's 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 a lack of music, a lack, lack of places for young musicians to go out and play and learn tunes learn how to play with the bands, how, how to interact when playing, how to read fast, how to, you know, all the professional uh, uh, nuts and bolts. Is that, is that, is that correct to say nuts and bolts? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's funnier so, if you said bolts and nuts because that would sound awkward to us, but it would still be right. I said nuts and bolts, didn't I? You said it right. That's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. <laughs> so going to um, cruise ships, it actually it is a good school for young musicians but well, the, uh, number one why is it good, good school because they play every day they have to be in shape they learn how to read fast they learn how to be how to do the shows professionally how to concentrate how to act during the show how to interact with district musicians how but to show up a, on time show up on time to, yeah. because if you don't show on time the show show goes on and, and you go off the ship next day back i think we've all <laughs> done that too i know you've done that but i think we've well, all done that where we, we show up late 
to uh, uh, <laughs> but there was always uh, uh, good reason but on the ships I was <laughs> that later if I don't show up in time then they, they the show would not go on right so but there is another there's, there's, there's a con uh, there's a pros but there's a cons that being a young musician also uh, could be hard on you when you come on the ships because you get into this poor environment and they expect you to come and play and perform and read and you know and play in groups and so, so uh, it's good but it will take some learning and some patience but it's good because lot you learn a lot of tunes all professional skills and stuff like that and then you're ready to, to go out and, and work professionally. I totally agree um, I never I never did cruise ships but when I when when uh, when I came out of university, uh, th there was a lot of work, and you and I were playing a lot. And back then, yes. There yeah, like of, there was a lot, lot of work, so I, I didn't need to to do that. I, I, I cut my teeth by making a lot of mistakes and all the things that I did, you know. Um, but, but let's back up a little. You also, because you and I share a, a mentor and a dear friend, um, when you came here, you, you stayed in Banff, you lived in Canmore, and you lived in the, in the Rocky Mountains, and you played at the Banff Springs Hotel, uh, the Fairmont, which is now the Fairmont Banff Springs, um, at the Rob Roy Dining Room uh, with Mr. Al Muirhead. For how many years did you play with Al there? That would be 98 to almost 99. Yeah. Time. 365. How many days a year? 365. 365. Yeah. Days a year. Little days off. It's always playing. And it was years. Yeah. And how many years, though, was that? Like, you played... How many years ago? No, no, no. Like you played. But I thought you played since with. Si I st or maybe I started. Oh no, no. I actually f be before starting working in dance in Rob Roy, I went on tour for a year across North America with the Elvis impersonator mm -hmm. show from Vancouver, and I done. You know, I've learned a lot, tons of new tunes for me as well. You know, of course. You know, well, well. And this is, this is one of my, everyone listening, this is always one of my favorite things to do with Igor. And we do this, I do this to you on the stage all the time, but I'm like, oh, Elvis, play me an Elvis tune. And, and uh, you always have that ability to, because you know so many tunes. You learn the songs, you learn the harmonies, yeah, and, you learn them the, from the in records. In cruise ships, you learn a lot of pop tunes, show yeah. tunes, uh, whatever. Yeah. And then you, you, like, you build, build up your yeah. uh, uh, repertoire. Repertoire. Bye. Yeah. And you did that a lot. I know with Al and uh, because he he loved to just call tunes and keys. And you were also playing uh, you were playing in a trio with Mike Levin on drums and you were playing left hand bass on a f full grand piano. But it had a synthesizer built into the keyboard so that when you played the left side. Uh, uh, no. The, no? no, that, that was a that was a acoustic MIDI grand. It's actually acoustic piano. I remember that. Piano yes. Because we've played it since then, but yeah, you, you but helped them was, pick that. The only, I used it for, uh, for strings, blowing, right. like, for backgrounds, or maybe the roads piano, but my uh, left hand synth was on top of it. Oh, okay, okay. And then okay. I had another synth here. Yeah. And the piano, so full keyboard, I used, full, I, I can use a full piano keyboard, you know, if I need to play something. Yeah. So <laughs> people think I have three hands. But, uh, <laughs> um, the... Okay, I that okay, that makes sense. And then so for me, I met Al when I was fifteen. When I was sixteen, I turned sixteen right after and uh I drove uh, straight down to see Al play at the Rob Roy dining room. And I that was the first time I, I met you when I was sixteen and I saw you play with Mike and Al and I was uh I went and sat in the front row and the Rob Roy is I mean the room's still there, but the Rob Roy itself is gone and the stage is yeah. gone. They've the, the uh, the Banff Springs renovated it. Are you okay? Do you need our, our yeah, tech? I'm just trying to make it brighter. Can you see my face okay? Or yeah, that, yeah, you that? look beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I remember sitting there and, and uh, I mean, I, I, I did not have uh, any money. And I remember, uh, you know, I think I ordered a Coke or something, right? And, Nothing and, changed. Yeah, nothing's changed, and the uh, and it was expensive. Um, you know, like a 
I think a steak was 75 bucks or something. And, and, uh, but I was just there to hear you guys. And I remember someone came over and was kind of saying, well, no, you need to order or you need to leave. And Al got off the stage because he knew that I was there just to listen to you guys. And, uh, and he said, no, 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 they can stay. And so I used to come frequently just to hear you. That was, that was the first time I ever met you was actually, was then just listening to you play. Um, yeah, I remember meeting you. You were playing with uh, Brian also. Brian. A few years later, yeah. Brian um, That's B only uh, Brian. Buchanan. No, Brian. And then Brian Sharon. Brian Sharon. Yeah, so we were playing down. That's when I met you. I don't remember you in a crowd. In yeah, because I, I didn't really get to meet you then. That was, I should say, the first time I saw you. And then maybe when I was, uh, maybe a year later, I was in, yeah, a year later, I was in university. And uh, I had, a, I was doing some, some private party gigs down there. And, and uh, yeah, that was, that's right. You're right. Wow. Memory's crazy. That's a long time ago. That's you, like, you, you know, who else? that's like three, four years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe five. <laughs> <laughs> you know who else used to come there quite often to listen to him? Mr. Henry Kevin. Yeah. He used to come to Rob Roy and sit in the yeah. room and just listen to them. Uh, Drove and that, all the way from Calgary to listen to us and go back. So That's for anyone who doesn't know Harry America. Beaumont, I think every city has a Harry Beaumont, but um, he he lived in Calgary and he'd drive an hour to Banff just to listen to you guys play jazz. And And Harry had stories... I we lost Harry last year and and he came to every Calgary Jazz Orchestra concert he came to every jazz show in the city <coughs> he went to live music everywhere he even went to jam sessions he just loved music um he loved oh, that's jazz. cool love jazz yeah i mean he saw Dizzy Gillespie he saw Ella Fitzgerald he saw he used uh, to hang out Ella. in New York all the time when he was young yeah you've, you've seen Ella. he Ella. saw everybody Parker. all of our heroes yeah. constantly <coughs> Um, and he played piano a little bit too, as you know. I gave him a couple of lessons. Did you give him some lessons? Yeah. Oh man, I, I, you know, I miss him now, and I'm gonna miss him more now that we're, you know, back out to, you know, starting to book shows again. But man, um, now you, uh, now since then, you and I have played a lot of shows together. Um, and I, I, I didn't even really think about this much until I was putting together my questions for you today. And I thought, you know, my guess is probably around 3,000 shows, uh, jobs, concerts, oh, performances. Shows okay. then, yeah. <laughs> we were averaging about a dollar a show uh, pay. Yeah. No, um, I think we've I think it's been around that. Now, I know uh, Sue, who just wrote. Uh, Hi again, Sue. We 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 played there. Um, when we went out and played, and we we stayed at Sue's Sue and, and her husband's place, um, when we were out there, and we uh, on the island, um, we've we've gone to the Philippines. You set a tour up for us through the Philippines. We've toured through Japan, we've toured through the States and Canada. It's been, um, yeah, like we've done a lot of jobs together. It's kind of. You never stopped to think about it because we were just always playing. It was just kind of what we did. But yeah, you you, you talk, you're saying like we're ocean ocean eleven, like good jobs together. Yeah, <laughs> that's the next job. <laughs> uh, can I be George Clooney? <laughs> Perfect. Right, I'm, yeah, I'm Brad. All right, you look like Brad Pitt. Brad, not Brad. Brat, Brat Pitt. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I think you look more like Brad Pitt. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so. Now, I know you and I are both lovers of lifting music, of what musicians call transcription. And I've talked about this lately with, well, I've talked about this with a lot of people, but how important is lifting, listening, learning, and lifting like to play from the records, directly from the records, and taking the time and doing the work from your perspective, how important is that? Well... Back when I was growing up, when when the jazz, the other the American jazz or whatever Western jazz, whatever jazz from outside of the Soviet Union started uh, 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 coming in to to, to so you know we didn't have many recordings. We did we did not have many. We could not buy uh, records, original records. 
they would buy them on the black market for big money, or once in a while they would license the, the Russian uh, company would license some American uh, vinyl albums and will sell it. Was so, that for but, like control reasons, like propaganda no, kind? No, just you know, the, the 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 Western music was not present there. So once in a while there was a company, the record company. Uh, record making, uh, uh, producing, not recording, right. uh, vinyl records company called Melodia, and they once in a while they would do they would license some Western uh, uh, albums and re 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 redo it in Russia in Russian language. We we'll mm -hmm. buy some of those, and then we will buy some black black market. But that's about what we had. We didn't have any books, nothing, and we didn't have didn't have much many many records, many, many recordings. So that's all we had to work with. And I think this is a good thing because we didn't have many, much choice, we didn't have many albums. And whatever we had, we learned it backwards, upside down, all the tunes from it. Because that's all we had. And that was our education. To lift, listen, how, how, how they did the feel, how they improvised, to lift, write it out. And then when I w went to college, we didn't have any books as well. We just a couple American books. but. Basically, our education was on lifting and then uh, performing, besides classical part. Mm -hmm. Later on, I found out that many schools, Berkeley, I don't know, Julia, they use special tasks to go, like tomorrow by like Monday would be assignment to lift the song. I didn't know, but this is also a big part of uh, schooling in America. And that's how you train your brain to, to understand, not just look in, in, in a, in a, in a printed music, because it doesn't make your brain work, unless you analyze, unless you listen. It's uh, the, the printed music should be like a, a aid, aid, you know, to, to, to study. Everything else should be go through your ears. Mm -hmm. And that if, you know, besides you will learn a lot of tunes to learn, memorize instead of always having a book. When you have a book, if you have a crouches, and you always walk with crouches, you will never learn how to walk. So, so if, if you learn it from recording, that's how you memorize. If you learn, if you always play by, by the sheet music in front of you, lead sheets will be called. Mm -hmm. Your brain doesn't work the way to memorize it. You will play all your life and still don't remember a girl from <laughs> So, so I, it is very important, it is. I love the way you put that, and you know I agree 100%. Um, the a lead sheet, you know, like when we're talking, the musicians know what a lead sheet is. Um, for people who aren't musicians, it's basically where the melody and maybe the lyrics, if there are lyrics to a song, and then chord changes above. But that's it. So it's just kind of, you know, the it's just the scaffolding for a song. But if, if someone's going to play with feel or understand the groove or the style or the language, um, that's who they are as a musician. So if you're playing a song, um, you know, there's something that you and I do a lot because you're really good at it. And of course, I love having fun when we're on stage and goofing around a bunch. But I'll say something like, um, you know, uh, I'll think of a song, which I can't even think of a song right now, uh, but not for me. I know you and I both love that song. So if I say, okay, Igor, um, and, and this is what happens now. For, for if, if you're wondering about like transcription and studying people's style and sound, mm -hmm. because I'll say to Igor on stage, I'll say, okay, Igor, can you play, but not for me, like Oscar Peterson? And can you, can you play the song for us right now a little bit like Oscar would play, but not for me? Right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or are you just telling? No, no, we're going to do it. Do it. <laughs> I love doing this.
while I've played this song. Yeah, Since... you're right. It's at least a year and a half. But the funny part about that is the song stays under your fingers because you know it. You you learned it from records, and then you've heard it from many records, and then you played it on many gigs, and all. And th the key doesn't matter anymore. Um, and then and then I love doing something like this too. Okay, um, can you play that? Uh, give us um, a little bit of, but not for me, but like Bill Evans would play. beautiful and see for me it's funny because people um, I've, I've had people ask like you know you you play with Igor a lot and you have Igor playing a lot and and I say well because if I feel like playing like playing that song like Oscar and that style and with that kind of rhythm section Igor just leads it and then um, and then you know I'm gonna you know I'm gonna do this one to you is let's uh, how about a New Orleanian sound like but not for me if Dr. John um, or Professor Longhair were to play it, what would that sound like? Oh, that's not really. I know I'm asking it's, tough it's, things. It's a version of song. It's I know it is. I know, but I know you can do it. Fantastic, and it's because you you learn the language from listening to all of the uh, the records and then practicing it, right? Uh, it's awesome. Um, what if uh, Liberace were to play, um, but not for me? Need the band like. <laughs> You're awesome, man. I miss playing with you. We're we're playing soon. Um, if anyone's in the Calgary area, we're playing July 24th, I think, and then we're playing the first and second weekend um, in August, Thursday, Friday, Saturday at Alvin's Jazz Club in down in South Calgary. Um, I, I think there are only 25 tickets available for the July 24th. It's you, me, and Cody and trio, and then uh, our quartet on. First weekend of August and the second weekend of August, we're doing um, uh, you, me, and uh, and uh, great singer Katie George. So, um, information's on my website if if uh, anybody's in the area and can come join us. I'm really looking forward to playing with you again, man. It's been too long. Goodness sakes, um, we could try playing something together. I haven't done this. We haven't done this here because of the delay, of course. But you'd have to just not listen to me at all because it never would. I, so it would just be like normal, exactly. <laughs> um, do you want to try playing a tune together? What do you want to play? You basically have to not listen to me because the delay, right? Like you, I, I'd be like half a bar behind you, I think. And I'll just play to what I hear from me and we'll see if this works. I've, I haven't tried this at all yet. Might as well try it live, right? 
what what do you want to um what about if I had you? Saying, no? I, I mean, I would. It, I think so. I, I followed you, so I think we're okay. Kind of felt nice to hear you play and play again, man. I'm, we might do another one of those in a bit here. Um, maybe we'll improvise a bit too. Um, that's a beautiful song. We, you know, we, you and I started a record um, in my piano session series, and then we we never got around to finishing it. We should. Um, I don't even think we'd want. I don't even know what happened to those tapes. Actually, um, I think the engineer still has them, but. We should uh, we should do one soon. Um, do you have uh, okay? Let's talk specifically about learning the piano for the piano players out there. Um, what would you say to someone who has never played piano before but wanted to start learning? Where should they start? Well, it depends what age they are. It depends what they want to learn. Let's just say they wanted to learn to. Play, play some jazz, like, you know, more like you play, and, and where would they start? They start from, uh, once again, depends if they know music, if they can read, if they can't read, if they don't know nothing about music, they start with learning music. So. Let's say they, they know a little bit about and reading. And they need to, uh, they would need to start listening mm -hmm. and try to lift whatever they can, and then come and do it. Analyze what they do, you know, how they how they go and correct mistakes and talk talk about. So, but uh, it's not simple, is it? It takes a long time to no. work through everything. No. But uh, yeah, and alongside, person need to be able to play the instrument. To know how to play the instrument. So, technique on piano. What are some things to study? Just the technique of the instrument. Um, if I recall correctly, you were, you were, you're a big hand and studies guy, right? Like the hand and studies book. Sorry? Hand and studies. Oh, hand and. You know, like yeah, the, a lot of, that kind of a stuff. A lot of, uh, piano players. It does, it's not being recommended in colleges, but I mean, it's not being 
a part of the program in college, but you know, some teachers may recommend that. <laughs> Right, just right. Uh, the, the exterior of fingers and stuff like that. Right, right, right. And then, okay. So, okay, let's talk about a different than person then. Um, we know the learning piano is great for studying harmony. Uh, it's often recommended that, uh, that musicians, and especially jazz musicians, learn piano and develop piano chops, not necessarily to go play or perform piano, um, but what advice would you give to a musician like me or somebody who, who is a player on another instrument to get better at playing the piano? Like what skills should they practice daily so that they can develop skill sets on the piano? Well, if piano is a second instrument, it depends if you want to master it or you just want to know it. Mm -hmm. So if you want to master it as a piano player, then you need to study as a like piano player do, which is a lot of scales and a lot of uh, playing classics and, uh, but if you just want to learn piano as, as an aid which is recommended to all instrumentalists mm -hmm. I, I know in Berkeley they teach it I know in Juilliard they teach every instrument they, they have like it's mandatory piano class in my in my degree we had to do it we called it uh, it was called uh, the piano class and we called it crash piano I think was the yeah but. you can call it crash piano but in my college it was uh, I was teaching second Piano, uh, piano is a second instrument as well. Right, right. Um, well, it depends whether you want to achieve if you want to become a piano player. Then. But if you just want to have a crash course, because I, I, you know, I always was uh, wondering, like uh, when I when I think music, when I, 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 I picture the piano keys, when I listen mm -hmm. to melody, when I, any anything I listen and trying to memorize, I, I. Um, I see keys, but I know, and I've heard that even the trumpet players, I know how you do it, but I've heard many trumpet players still even playing trumpet, thinking piano keys. You know, so if you do that, then of course, piano, learning piano is, a, is a very important. Yeah, and it, I, I, I think it's, you're, I think you're 100% right. I know, um, you know, as you know, I, I when I was a, a child, when I was four years old, I started on piano lessons, and in, in uh, I, I don't know if you do the Royal Conservatory in in Russia, but I did. Um, I can't remember my grade nine or grade ten or something, and uh, but then I just stopped playing. Um, you know, I started playing trumpet, and I was uh, focused on that. And then you know, in university, that was my focus, and then singing, and then trying to learn how to orchestrate and write and arrange just the time and the dexterity just completely fell away and then of course I've studied it a lot as a composer but I have like you know like arranger chops so I sit down to play piano and I just I, I know what I want to do <laughs> but it doesn't work um, yeah if, if you're if you're a horn player or uh, anything but piano or guitar you, you think linear yes but you don't think you don't think you're going to visualize chords unless you actually know. Like you cannot, I don't know, I don't know. Like 12 notes. That's difficult on the trumpet. I I know, I, yeah. <laughs> I put 12 trumpets in your Yeah, exactly. You know, and it's funny because when I originally was learning trumpet, I definitely thought linearly and thought one line. But through composing and doing like orchestrations for, for bands, now I think of the line I'm going to play, but I'm, I think harmonically. And I think especially playing, like, you know, playing with you and playing with uh, Tommy Banks and playing with players that have um, really, like, really developed harmonic sense uh, and, and a strong inner voicing movement. Um, when I started to be able to hear that more, I hear that even though I'm, I can only play one of the notes at the time, you know, I, I, as, a, as a single note instrument, but... Um, so, uh, so what skills should, should a piano as a second instrument, horn player or something, what, what should they practice daily? Two, five, ones, um, scales, uh, you know, v piano voicings. Well, the, the harmony, they study harmony on the piano. Yeah. You know, voice leading, harmony, reharm, uh, 
you play scales and uh, exercise if you want to uh, develop the technique to play something. <laughs> Like that. Like yeah. That. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Um, what? Okay, well, let's talk about the Calgary Jazz Orchestra because we played played in that group for a long time now. Um, what was your favorite CJO show that we've played? I played many. I can't remember. <laughs> I know. What's one that stands out, though? I like uh, uh, Christmas show. Yeah. Christmas shows. I like Sinatra's shows. Well, I think it, it's the same show, isn't it? Yeah, the Sinatra Christmas show we do every year, yeah. It's one of my favorites. I like Christmas music. Yeah, me too. Me too a lot. I missed I missed that show this year, actually. It was nice that we got together on Zoom, but um, I missed that one this year. That was, uh, that was always a highlight. Um, well, we booked it this year, and tickets are going on sale soon. So, um, and Or depending on when you're listening to this, they are already on, but I think... Tickets are going on sale August first. Season tickets, so um, hope that uh, that they the the shows sell out like they always used to. Um, what theme should the Calgary Jazz Orchestra do in an upcoming show? What theme? Yeah, I would do. Uh, I don't know. Maybe West Montgomery. Maybe uh, interesting. Okay. What was the what was that one? The B3. Oh yeah, well we are going to do a B3 thing, but you is that your your organ sitting right behind you there? Oh, behind me, yes. Uh, oh, oh this thing there with the foot pedals, <laughs> yes. Um this this little thing I just threw it here. I uh as soon as you want to, we're going to we're going to do that, but we'll def and we'll feature you on it as soon as you want to. Um that's a that's a must. Like we could do a a whole organ night i mean obviously the organ you play a lot of organ type stuff or on a keyboard with our at our soul show or in our gospel shows or the blue shows and stuff we've done but um but yeah like a jimmy smith or uh, uh that kind of a night would be a lot of fun um okay lightning round i'm going to ask you a bunch of questions and you answer them as quick as possible who makes the best piano Germans. The Germans. What what brand then is that? Bosendorfer? I don't think Bosendorfer is German. I don't know. I know, I know right? nothing about piano. That's what so. Oscar Peterson played. It is what Oscar played. Yeah, that's why I was guessing it. But I I, th I thought it was German because it sounds a little, it yeah, sounds a little bit German to me. Germans, Czech. And Czech is that. Oh, okay, okay. The Russians make great piano for Estonia. It's, it's very I, expensive. I've seen those. Yeah, they're very expensive and they're fine, fine pianos. Oh, as nice. good as the old Steinways. Really? Um, I know you like Steinway too, because you, we've we've played. Yeah, not the Boston though. Yeah, right, right, right. Not the entry level ones. Um, okay, who makes the best electronic keyboard? I uh, I came to to use a lot of Casio keyboard. Uh, and they are right now very becoming leading company. In, in the yeah, they sound great, profession. and they, and I've helped you load gear many times, and they're a lot lighter than your old Rollins that I used to I help know. you carry. So I used to be a Roland guy, <laughs> yeah. And Rollins used to be really great until some kind of model they really you know cut the corners and stuff. Hmm. Things that I said no, thank you. That makes sense. Okay, um, very serious question. How many banjos do you prefer in a band? None. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If you had to change your name, you have to change your name to something else, what would it be? Gary. Gary? Gary what? I actually, years ago, years ago, when I got annoyed, people called me Igor. Oh, right, yeah. Igor, yeah. Yeah, like, come on. When I got annoyed, I, I actually seriously thought, Change my name to Gary Cole. Gary Cole. <laughs> yeah. 
All right. You don't and look actually, like. I already done a bunch of papers, you know. Uh, you don't look like a Gary Cole to me, though. But uh, but I've known you too long. The um, okay. So Gary Cole, if you could go listen to any piano player in time, live tonight, you could go hear them right now. Any piano player from history, who would it be? Winston Kelly. Yeah, Winston Kelly. Yeah. Um, okay, so if you could travel anywhere in the world right now, just like that, where would you go? I would go to Russia. Actually. You go visit <laughs> Russia. That's nice. I like that. Oh, okay. I want to go back to the other one. So Winton Kelly, um, tell our listeners your favorite album of Winton Kelly's or favorite one that he's on because he worked as a sideman so much that they should check out. Anything with Winton Kelly on, on, on name on it. Anything. Okay, well, give, give us one. So we'll point them in the direction. Winton Kelly Trio. There you go. Just uh, just search it. Find it on. Winton Kelly Half Note, I believe. Live at the Half Note. Yeah, live on Half Note. I don't think I know that one. With Wes Montgomery. Oh, my. Oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. It's I will. Live. The Half Note. I'm, I'm just taking a second to, because uh, I, I honestly don't think I've heard that one. That's, I'm going to sit on my deck and watch the sunset tonight and listen to Winton Kelly live at the half note with Wes Montgomery. That, that sounds like a good night. Okay. If you had to marry one character from Star Wars, who would it be and why? You know what? I don't even know characters. Star Wars. I don't really watch it. <laughs> so uh, I don't want to... Uh, say that we'll get married to Dar Darth Vader. Darth Vader? Okay. <laughs> That's the only guy I can think of. <laughs> that works. Okay. Um, but did you know, can I interrupt? Did mm -hmm. you know that Star Wars were copied from the, were actually inspired by the Russian uh, uh, sci-fi sci sci writer? And there was a movie which Actually, the who was who was it? Uh, Star Wars. Uh, who was George director? Lucas? George Lucas. He admits he took Darth Vader, used to be character in Russian movie Darth Vader. So the, he took a lot of characters from it, and he admits he borrowed it from this Russian movie. That's how Star Wars was born, by the way. That's interesting. Well, I know that I know from Sarah, our friend, our Barry player, uh, who is a Star Wars guru uh that that he g guru oh. master um she's a she's a jedi of star wars knowledge uh that george lucas took from everywhere and so that doesn't surprise me like he just you know any idea he could and put it in there which is neat but google it he was inspired by this russian movie that was played in, in us and there's a book and there's all this a lot of those characters they just a little bit changed their names oh interesting that's interesting. Um, okay, if you had to shave your head bald, completely bald, or completely that's bald, not it's not that's shave. not shaved bald. No, you you've got a you've got a very good uh, at home haircut, I think. Um, or dye it completely pink. Which would you choose? Shave. Okay. Yeah. Uh, which? What? Sorry. What is the best? Or which is the best? Oscar Peterson record ever made. What do you mean by five thousand millions? Yeah, I know. Millions. It's not easy. Top of your head. Uh, I like Oscar playing Broadway. Uh, really? Yeah. Okay, that's all going. The, I'm. All the I'm, show tunes. All the show tunes. But you, I know you and I both really like all the old school show tunes, the Gershwin, Cole Porter, like what they call the Great American Songbook now. Like those, I know you and I both love those, so that doesn't surprise me. But I honestly thought you were going to say exclusively with my friends or maybe Night Train. I thought you were going to say something like that, so you surprised me. Um, between you and me, and I know this is going to be hard, which one of us is the best piano player? Who you're breaking? Best piano player? Yeah. You are. Okay, that's what I thought. It's uh, I have it recorded. We've settled this for history. <laughs> um, what are you awesome at besides playing the piano? 
What am I sorry? Awesome at. What are you great at? Awesome at. Awesome yeah, at. That nobody knows. Oh. Computers. Computers, yeah. Yeah, you are good with computers. Um what's uh Yeah, that's about it. That's all the questions I have. Do you have any questions for me? Yeah, what time would that? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's play another tune. That was fun for me. Will you will you humor me? Can we do another tune? Okay. What do you feel like? A glass. <laughs> I don't know that tune. What key is it in? A glass of wine. Uh, let's do. Um, let's do. Oh gosh, I can't even. It, it's been so long, Igor. You know that was. I've spent a lot of time practicing in this last kind of year and a half, but. Um, but tunes, they, they're hard. Oh, and we've got some hellos. Uh, hi, Minju. Thanks for saying hi. Hi from Poco. Where's Poco? I don't know where Poco, Poco is. Hunters? It's in the Hunters. Oh, it's in the Hauntus. Oh, okay. Um, and Norm, how you go? Hi, Johnny. Uh, I had trouble getting connected. Well, there, uh, this will still be on Facebook after, so you can go back and list. it'll upload when we're done, so you can um, all hear the early shenanigans if you like. Um, and we will be putting them on podcasts. I just the, the time to do all this hasn't come up yet. Um, the, the only tune coming to my head is But Not For Me. Let's play that. What key do you want to play it in? But it's Not hot? For Me. Okay, did we just play? Where was yeah, or, we, or something else. Oh, oh Port Coquitlam. Okay. Poco, that makes sense, right? Um, that's where Poco is. Um, where? That, that, Port Coquitlam. Huh? By Vancouver area. Yeah. See, we're learning. Um, I don't know. I can never think of a tune. I, it, I, we haven't done this for so long. I just can't even think of songs. Um, uh, uh, I thought about you. Okay. I thought about you too a lot. I thought about you a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, three down. Okay. If I remember it. Let's, let's swing it out. Let's swing it out. Okay. Okay. How's it go? Okay. I took a trip on okay. a train. Thank you. 
tough isn't it that is really tough oh man well in a couple weeks we'll be doing it live which is good nice to see you again buddy it really is thanks everyone for tuning in and listening um this is the great ego yukolov uh guy i have a lot of respect for um and uh he, he's just such a great musician and uh I, yeah we're, we're we're doing a bunch of things coming up here soon so hopefully you can can come see us live if you are in or around the calgary area uh, at the end of july and the beginning of august and then we'll be back with the calgary jazz orchestra first show is october and then our christmas concerts again and we'll be doing a ton of other stuff i'm sure so um as the schedules are now starting to fill up after the lockdown and uh we'll be doing gosh all the private parties and and, and things we used to do as well. Ella, it's going to start to come up again, and I'm looking forward to get back to work. Um, oh, thank you, Sue. Love this. Come back to Van Vancouver Island. So do you want to go? We should go back and play on Vancouver Island. Go sure. back and tour out there and go to Vancouver and Victoria and, and up to to, to, to Comox and stuff. Is that Club Was it Herman's? Was it? Yeah. Herman's, yeah. We played Herman's at... Is it still um, open? Uh, as it far as I know, yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, Herman's in Victoria, and we played... We'll play Frankie's in Vancouver, and we'll play. We'll go up to that. Oh, what was it called? Avalanche, I think, where the the Georgia Strait Jazz Society is in Comox. I think we played there. So if you're from that area, we'd, we'd yeah, we'd love to come back. That would be a lot of fun. Um, Elizabeth said, "Cool tune." That's uh, I thought about you. That is a very cool tune. I like that one. Um, thank you all for uh, tuning in and listening, whether you're live with us tonight or listening on the recording after. And uh, say um, next week. I think next week I have off, uh, so we won't, we aren't doing a live stream. I don't think, um, but uh, but just follow my social media on uh, at Mr. Johnny Summers on Facebook or Instagram uh, or at Johnny Summers on Twitter, and I'm sure stuff will be coming out there. So thanks for tuning in, and everybody have a great night. Can we have my exit music, please? <laughs> What else?